Yo, yeah, what's going on guys? Seth Spartan here. Guys, we've got an awesome and exciting video for you guys today. Today we're going to be talking about TRT, the dangers of TRT, testosterone replacement therapy. Make sure you give this video a watch to the end. We're going to get into some stuff that you don't want to miss. So let's get rolling. All right, guys. So the dangers of TRT. Now, aside from all of the minor stuff and, you know, all these things which, which could possibly happen, and I'm just honestly going to say minor things uh, because there's a lot of things with testosterone replacement that you can completely avoid, whether that's, you know, if people are concerned about hair loss or acne or possible, um, uh, what is it, uh, infertility. You can complete, all these things are completely, um, how would I say, completely avoidable and uh, you can basically remove them from TRT. But there's one thing I want to focus and hone in on in terms of the dangers of TRT, and that is a singular issue. So this is what I'm going to say, the danger of TRT, because there's only one significant, one really significant issue with testosterone replacement therapy, okay, with TRT, and we're going to get into this now. So, you know, if you talk to any cardiologist uh, worth their salt, or if you uh, talk to, hopefully, uh, a good endocrinologist, um, there's really only one concern, one big concern with testosterone replacement therapy. Aside from, you know, there's tons of these little things which you can, they're, they're either not that important or they're, um, they're either not that important in the first place or they are completely manageable in terms of you can basically remove them completely, okay? These are side effects you shouldn't have, they're manageable. Having said that, I'm going to focus on the one thing that I'm going to tell you now. So this is it. What is the one big danger of TRT and the most important one? Plaque buildup in the arteries, also known as atherosclerosis. Now, it's a common thing, and I've talked about this across all, you know, all my channel multiple times, right? Is that with anabolic steroid use and abuse, pretty much abuse, okay, or misuse, uh, what are you going to have? Two huge issues that are unavoidable. Heart wall thickening, where the heart becomes bigger, stronger, thicker, which changes the dynamics of the heart, basically letting you pump less blood out. And, you know, genetics, total time on, and how much taken is du a direct result of this. And this is what kills bodybuilders usually. Um, and this is what we saw with COVID, right? But basically, high amounts of anabolic steroids, misuse or abuse, you know, and plus, you know, your, your particular genetics, uh, what we're going to talk about a weaker heart in general from this. The second thing besides heart wall thickening is what plaque buildup in the arteries. Now you guys, some of you guys might be shocked, you know, by me talking about this or by saying this, because you'd say, well, you know, I thought TRT, you know, that's not an issue. Boom on TRT. Well, it is, uh, it can be an issue on TRT and let's just talk about what we, what we know so far. So getting back to the cardiologist or endocrinologist. If they know what they're talking about, they're going to tell you this. Um, going on testosterone replacement, not anabolic steroids, going on testosterone replacement, we know that this increases to a small amount, what? Plaque buildup in the artery. I'm going to I'm gonna pull out one study for you guys right here. I got this up on my phone. I'm going to just read you guys a little bit. I'll post this in the comments. You can take a look at it for yourself. But one thing that we can, the one I don't want to say big danger, but the one important possible danger of TRT that cannot be mitigated or avoided is what? Possible plaque buildup in the arteries. Okay, and I'm going to explain, I'm going to break the study down too. So please listen to what I have to say here. Okay, so the study is on PubMed. Uh, this study is called this, Testosterone Treatment and Coronary Artery Plaque Volume in Older Men with Low Testosterone. So what they did was they took, they took basically... 70 men, 70 men, and they gave them placebo, and 70 men, and they gave them uh, testosterone replacement, okay? So 70, nothing as a, as a you know, uh, a baseline or a placebo group, and then they gave 70 uh, men uh, testosterone, okay? Basically. So um, let's see here. Uh, recent studies have yielded conflicting results as to whether testosterone treatment increases cardiovascular risk. To test the hypothesis that testosterone treatment of older men with low testosterone uh, slows progress, progression of non-calcified coronary artery plaque volume. So let's get right into this. So 
Uh, what they did was for one year, they gave one group testosterone and they gave one group no testosterone, okay? So 70 men, basically each group. And this was the result. Uh, the result was that um, there was, uh, hang on, for the primary outcome, testosterone treatment compared with placebo was associated with a significantly greater increase in non-calcified uh, plaque volume from baseline to 12 months. And I'll, let me, let me, before we talk about this, I'm going to give you the conclusion of the study. Among older men with uh, symptomatic uh, hypogonadism, that's low testosterone obviously, treatment with testosterone gel for one year compared with placebo was associated with a significantly greater increase in coronary arter artery non-calcified plaque volume, okay, as measured by coronary computed uh, tomographic anography. I think I hopefully I pronounced that right, but it's basically a CT scan, okay? So this is what you need to know, guys. This is the study. So they basically took 70-year-old men. They gave 70 of them testosterone and another 70 no testosterone. And what they found was that if given testosterone, in this particular form was gel, for one year, they had significantly greater uh, plaque in their arteries, okay? Non-calcified plaque. But either way, it's plaque. So... What is one of one of the conclusions we can draw from this? Is that what older men it puts you at risk uh, for sped up uh, plaque buildup? But this is what you what we need to note here. It says it says also in the study there's two important things. One is is that most or half of these men had significantly bad what uh, plaqued up arteries to begin with. It says that about seventy men had uh, had severely plaqued arteries. Okay, so so. Half of, half of the total men in this study, in other words, half of the total men in this study already had bad plaque buildup, okay? Which means what? They had damaged arteries in the first place, okay? That's the number one thing. And the second thing is, is that they're 70 years old, okay? They're 70 years old, which means what? Is that their arteries are also, you know, older arteries. They're not extremely healthy arteries, even if they don't have plaque uh, even if they don't have any plaque buildup or low plaque buildup in the arteries. So this is so here's the here's the punchline, guys. Here's the take home conclusion on the matter. And I've and I've said this again because I've done so much so much research and, and information digging onto what causes plaque buildup in in the male ar male female arteries in the first place. And this is what I found. This is gonna be shocking to you. If you fast right? If you don't eat for a lo for long periods of time, what happens? Your body basically burns large amounts of body fat, right? Your body will dump saturated fat, you know, the stored body fat in your bloodstream. You're going to use that for fuel. There's no doctor that's going to tell you fasting is bad for you if you're healthy, okay? Fasting is one of the best things, or hopefully, hopefully, maybe there's some crazy doctors, but it's pretty much unanimous. Fasting is amazing for you, but this increases, this can increase your cholesterol short term too, until it goes down long term, right? But here, here's the punchline. Here's what I'm trying to get to. You. If you fast and your body's dumping tons of fat in your bloodstream, if you eat a stick of butter, if you eat bacon, if you if you consume or if you have large amounts of fatty acids in your bloodstream, this is not damaging at all. It's not bad for you at all unless you have damaged arteries to begin with. This is the important key you guys need to you need to just hear. This is what you need to remember, okay? Because your body's main fuel source, it despite what you hear, you know, which is completely wrong, your body's main fuel source is fat. 99% of the energy stores on your body are fat, okay? And this is not including protein because your body will either pick to burn two things, fat, or carbohydrates, also known as glucose, unless you are starving. If you're starving, it's gonna burn protein too, but in a typical healthy person where there's fat and carbohydrates, your body's gonna burn these two. So of those two energy sources, 99% of your body's energy sources are fat. Maybe 1% carbohydrates, okay? So your body's main fuel source is fat, why? Because it's the most powerful fuel, fuel source, even though it's a little bit harder to break down if you're not in shape, especially, okay? So the thing is, is that this, your body is naturally made and designed to burn fat. It's not a big deal to have fatty acids in your bloodstream. I'm not telling people to eat a stick of butter, but if you eat a stick of butter, you eat a big fat steak, a bunch of bacon, 
You got to you increase, you got a bunch of fat in your bloodstream. It's not a big deal. Why? Because the endothelium, that's the inner, uh, the inner membrane of your arteries. Guess what? It's, 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 it's smooth. It's like, uh, uh, it's completely smooth and the fat just, it, it just slides off of it. It doesn't stick to it. So here's the bottom line is if you, if you have healthy, good arteries and blood vessels, it pretty much doesn't matter how much fat you eat. Not telling people to eat unlimited amounts of fat, but it doesn't pretty much doesn't matter how much fat you eat. Why? Because it doesn't stick to it. If you have damaged arteries, however, it sticks to it. And this is why in diabetics, and you can read study after study after study, diabetics have what? Terrible plaque buildup in their, their arteries. They have tons of, uh, they're at a huge risk for the plaque buildup, for heart attacks, and for cardiovascular. Why? Because guess what's happening? The plaque is sticking to their arteries at an accelerated rate. Why? Because high blood sugar damages artery walls. So that's basically the conclusion on that is so if we take going back to the study real quick if we take these older men if we take the older men right older men most half of this half of these older men had severely damaged arteries anyway because they had severely placked up arteries okay and even the ones that didn't still their arteries are not in good shape how do i know that because if you look at somebody's skin you can tell pretty easily just by looking at somebody's skin you can tell that you're what they have higher hgh levels and their body's replacing cells faster okay now this is not some scientific measure but you can look at somebody and see if they have wrinkles or, or or no wrinkles okay and it can be assumed that yeah you, they have higher hgh levels or replacing cells faster okay so again this is not scientific at all but this is this is something that you can look at okay and you know uh, the same can be said of joints, tendons, ligaments, and other things, cartilage in the human body, right? But the bottom line is, is that high HGH levels also combined with um, uh, less, uh, what's the word, not free radicals and toxins, but higher HGH levels combined with less, I'll just say less overall uh, cellular, cellular damage from toxins or um, free radicals, other things, is going to do what? Not just the not just affect all the cells in your body, but give you a healthier artery and blood vessel. Okay, so the basically the take home message is this: summing up what we know from the study, there's no problem with fats or testosterone replacement as long as you have healthy blood vessels. Now, let me let me answer this question for you guys real quick, and that's the same thing with fats. However, let's let's say you have damaged arteries or blood vessels right? Guess what? Then should you have a, a lower cholesterol and a lower fat diet? Yes, absolutely. Why? Because if you if your arteries or blood vessels are damaged, the fat's going to stick to them easier. And by decreasing the amount of fat and cholesterol, guess what's going to happen? You're going to slow down that process of the plaque building up. But if you have healthy arteries and blood vessels, it's not a big deal. Now, I want to touch on this. I already told you this. Blood sugar, Blood, if you have elevated blood sugar, this damages. It's is proven undebatable. High blood sugar damages your arteries, okay, and will make and will then make plaque stick to them. Cholesterol, okay. Second, what else will damage arteries besides high blood sugar? High blood pressure will damage arteries, and that's why we see plaque buildup is usually the worst. Always where where blood pressure is the highest around the arteries into that are being uh, supplying the blood then into the body. So two things that damage uh, blood vessels, arteries, two things that damage your, uh, your vessel walls, high blood glucose and high blood pressure. And that's another reason not to eat sugar or lots of carbs, even if you're healthy, okay? Well, d d glucose is toxic and is damaging in high amounts, okay? If you're over 100 or over 120 for long periods of time, even if you're healthy and you're just eating pounding carbs all day, I guarantee your blood sugar is high all day. Okay, so I'm not recommending that. Um, I've been ranting and, and raving on this for, well, I've ra been rambling on this for a while, so I'm just going to say this and we're done. We're out of here. Guys, stay safe, stay healthy. Okay, testosterone replacement for the most part is safe. However, if you are an older individual, with arteries and blood vessels that are not as good or you already have damage to your arteries or blood vessels, one of those two, 
you pretty much should not do testosterone replacement unless you need to, unless the benefits outweigh uh, the cons, because, you know, there's tons of benefits to testosterone replacement, especially in older men, such as, you know, you know, it reverses frail bones. They're going to have stronger bones. They're going to have more muscle mass, which is going to keep their blood sugar lower. It's going to make them feel better, more confidence, better sleep. Oh, there's, there's a whole, whole huge list of benefits from testosterone. But if you have, if you're older, you know, you're an older man, or you have damaged blood vessels, or I mean, damaged blood vessels or slash arteries, you're going to have to weigh this out for yourself because the reason I'm going to say this real quick and we're done and we're done. This video is over. Listen up. The reason why testosterone speeds up plaque buildup in older men, my professional hypothesis is due to what? What does testosterone do? It increases what? Blood pressure. And it also does what? It increases cholesterol. Now, is a, is a, slight, is a small increase in blood pressure a big deal if you are... Uh, younger, healthy male with, uh, if you're a younger, healthy male with healthy, good arteries, is this the problem? A slight increase in blood pressure? No. It, and also, with, I talked about testosterone also increases cholesterol. This is just a side effect, okay? Because it's a whole other topic why it does that. But, okay, so if, if you have an increase in blood pressure, is this a big deal if you've got healthy arteries, high HGH levels, and, you know, no artery damage? No, not a big deal. Is it also a big deal if you're healthy, you have good arteries, and you increase your cholesterol? No, it's not a big deal. I told you. It's not a big deal unless you already have artery damage or you have low HGH levels, meaning that what? Uh, your arteries are not being repaired as fast. Uh, higher likelihood that uh, your arteries are... Basically not as healthy as they once were. Guys, Seth Spartan, stay safe, stay healthy. And this is the dangers of TRT or specifically the one big one. And we're out of here. Boom.